Declutter overwhelm is a real thing. I know this from personal experience, but in today's video, I wanna go through a new strategy or method for decluttering, whether you are going through your house for the first time or whether you just need to do another pass to kind of keep things maintained. First, I wanna take you through this as if you need to declutter your entire house or the majority of your home. Pick an area, let's say your kitchen, your closet, your bathroom, the garage, just choose an area of your home that needs to be gone through. On Monday, you are going to do a mental clutter dump. Get everything on paper. This is so important. You need to organize your thoughts. You need to write down the areas of your home that you need to declutter. It's all jumbling up in your head, cluttering up your mental space, and I promise you it's weighing you down. So make doctor's appointments and phone calls. Kind of tick off a few things from your to-do list that have been weighing you down mentally. That's what you're gonna do on Monday. On Tuesday, you are gonna grab a trash bag and do some trash bag therapy. It's called many things. You can call this a trash dash, a garbage run, whatever you want, but for tea, Tuesday, let's call it the trash dash. All right, you're gonna grab a garbage bag and you're just going to look for garbage. This is not a new concept, but it is effective. <laughs> bears repeating. This is all you're going to focus on on Tuesday. If you're working in your kitchen, get rid of broken appliances. Go through your junk drawer if that's in the kitchen and just clear out trash. Do not get distracted or sidetracked by organizing or cleaning. Just go through the trash. On Wednesday, you are going to declutter your wish list. These are items that represent your fantasy self, someone that you at one point hoped you would become or hobbies that you hoped you would get into, projects that you wish you could finish or wish you had finished. Let's keep our focus the kitchen. Let's say you have a bunch of darling cookie cutters as an example and you've bought them, you think they are so cute. Um, you had all the intention of doing different craft projects with these. You thought, you know what, I'm gonna love making sugar cookies with my kids. I think this is gonna be such a blast. I've collected them, they're in this cute little jar. Guess what? You hate making sugar cookies. They make a mess in your kitchen. It's a pain to have to do the cookies and then the frosting. It's double the mess. It uses tons of butter. Butter's expensive. Whatever the reason is that you are not making sugar cookies, you can go ahead and declutter these cookie cutters. Maybe keep one or two for sandwiches if you still use them in that way. But you don't need an entire jar if you're not making sugar cookies. You're still a good mom, even if you're not making these. You do other things with your kids. So on Wednesday, declutter your wish list. Items that represent the person that you thought you would be or you thought you would enjoy being but you didn't actually in the end. It's totally fine to let these things go. In fact, it clears room for the things that you are enjoying and that you are doing. So go ahead and declutter the cookie cutters guilt-free. Thursday, you're going to get rid of thoughtless clutter. These are things without a home. These are things you haven't given much thought to, making a permanent spot for in your space. I have several thoughts on how to do this. Let's talk about it. You're decluttering in the kitchen. Let's say you come across a glue stick. I love um, Dana from A Slob Comes Clean. She says, where would I look for this first? Okay, so you say, I would look for it in the junk drawer. All right, so I am going to put this glue stick in the junk drawer. Here's the thing. This is my opportunity to practice the one in, one out rule. So I'm gonna stick this in the junk drawer now. It could be that I end up finding several things that relate to like arts and crafts and I can make a separate baggie. I have these baggies that I really love from Amazon. I can make a separate arts and crafts baggie. It might not end up in the junk drawer because you're going to create a separate category for it. It might not fit in the junk drawer. You might have a new organization 
system set up later. That is one of your final steps is organization. But for now, you're gonna say, I would look for this glue stick in the junk drawer. I need to remove an item. So your junk drawer is kind of junky. That is totally fine. You're not gonna worry about organizing, like I said right now. Okay, so I have these labels. You're gonna say, I have absolutely no use for these. They've, they've been in here forever. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter these. Now, I actually am gonna keep these labels. <laughs> this is just an example. I do use these, but let's say, you just say, I just, I don't like these. They didn't perform well. I'm getting rid of it. All right, so you're following the one in, one out rule for the glue stick. That way you're making more decluttering progress. Remember though too, you can always declutter the glue stick. Do not feel like you should keep specific items for any reason whatsoever. So if you don't use glue, <laughs> just declutter the glue stick. Forget where would I look for it first. If you don't use it, don't keep it. Let's say as another example, you come across a pair of scissors and you're like, my gosh, these are handy. <laughs> I definitely need scissors, but I'm not exactly sure where I would look for these first. So if the where would I look for it first question doesn't really get you anywhere, ask where would I use this the most? So I'm thinking, okay, I cut the wicks off my candles. I need to cut open my little yeast packets when I'm cooking. I need to cut the dog bag. Like whenever we get the dog food, I need to cut open the dog food bag. That actually happens in the kitchen. And then my daughter and I really like to do art projects together, which end up on the kitchen counter and the kitchen table. All right, so I'm gonna put these in the kitchen. That's where I will use these the most. Whether or not that makes sense to anyone, it doesn't matter. That is where you will use the item. So go ahead and put the item, the scissors in this case, somewhere in the kitchen where it is useful for the things that you're actually going to be doing with it. For me, that is right here. This makes total sense to me because this is where I use my yeast packets. This is where my candles are. So it's right next to that. So I have a pair of scissors right there next to my recipe box. Another tip for decluttering, thoughtless clutter, the things that kind of just ended up in a space because you haven't given much thought to a permanent home. Instead of asking yourself, because the goal really is to get rid of more inventory, basically as much as possible so that you can live without this burden of clutter. But instead of asking yourself, can I live without this? Ask yourself, have I lived without this? It could be that you own the item and you've been living without it this entire time because you didn't know where it was. So instead of asking, can I live without this? Which kind of triggers like a fight or flight. Oh gosh, I don't know. What if this, what if that, what if I need it later? I don't wanna be caught in a pinch or a bind. Have you been living without it? this whole time anyway? If the answer is yes, and you've had other ways of getting around certain problems that this item might solve, go ahead and just declutter it. On Friday, you are going to declutter your FOMO clutter, your fear of missing out clutter, or your fear of missing it clutter. So let's say again, you're still in the kitchen. This is the area you're working on. Did you buy something? Here's the fear of missing out. Did you buy something on impulse? Because you saw it online, it was solving everybody else's problems, you thought it could solve yours, and you just haven't used the item, but you've held onto it because you spent the money and you don't wanna miss out. <laughs> you wanna be like everyone else who's using and loving the item. If it didn't work for you, pass it on. It's going to work for someone else and you can bless them with it and bless yourself by unburdening yourself from this needless clutter. The fear of missing it clutter. This one is potentially the hardest, at least for me. I know I get hung up on this one a lot. What if I need this later? Well, you can go back to have I been using it? Have I been missing it? Or have I completely been living without it this whole time anyway? You can always go back to that, but 
keep at least one extra. If you're really, really worried, um, start with duplicate items and keep two. Keep the one that you're using and one as a backup. This is a very gentle decluttering process. If you can kind of catch on to that, this is gentle. This is not beast mode. You're actually going through your house in a little bit slower, much more gentle way, which can be very helpful if this whole thing seems super intimidating. So you're gonna be really gentle. You're gonna say, you know what? I just, I don't know. <laughs> I might need this item later. Um, do I really need five crock pots? I mean, that's a little excessive. So no, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the one that I'm using and I'm really worried it's gonna break down or I'm gonna host a big dinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep another one just in case. That's fine. Start with duplicates, declutter everything but the two that you're actually going to keep. Now I normally don't recommend having a safe box. A box where you keep items just in case, letting yourself think about it. But in this approach where you're taking a more gentle, you know, take on everything, definitely do it. Have a safe box. This works really well for a lot of people. And I think if it's your style, absolutely embrace this. On Saturday, you have made it. <laughs> You've made it through almost an entire week of decluttering. If you've gotten to this point, be really really proud of yourself. Whether you are sweeping your whole house or you are just focusing on one specific area, give yourself a pat on the back. We're going to declutter a few sentimental items. This can be very tricky to do. And if you can only get rid of one thing, you are making enormous progress. Here is another way to do this or another way to look at it that's even more gentle use the item, make it a goal to actually pull out and use the sentimental item. Maybe you feel like, you know what, I can't get rid of, get rid of any of this sentimental stuff. I'm not ready. I, I just want to keep it and I don't want to let it go and regret it. That is totally understandable. Make it a goal then to actually use the sentimental items. Ooh, I want to show you one of mine. In college, I did a study abroad where I toured Europe and had so many amazing memories. This little dish is actually one thing that I got in Italy that is pure crystal. I absolutely love it. I still think it's beautiful. I kept this in a box for about 15, 12 years maybe, 12, 15 years, just thinking I don't want it to break. I can't replace this item. This is so special and sentimental. Well, I'm not reminded of my trip when I see that box. I'm not brought back any happy memories. The box does not in any way um, feel sentimental to me. It's the actual item that does. So I decided to take this out, risk it getting broken, risk it getting ruined, and say, we're gonna enjoy this for as long as it lasts. If it lasts another generation, that's amazing. But if not, we have the memories. So every single Easter, I bring this out and we fill it with Cadbury eggs. This is just our little Easter tradition now. And so every single year, my kids see this bowl and I get to tell the story of my trip to Europe. So use the item, even if you feel like I'm not decluttering it. I'm not decluttering anything sentimental totally fine. Just make a goal to actually pull something out and use it. Use the crystal, use the china, use the hand embroidered dish towels and napkins and tablecloth from your grandmother. Use the items. They're not nearly as meaningful left in a box or shoved into the back of a cupboard. Your kids won't know what they are when they come across it. If they ever end up cleaning out your house for you several years down the road and the memory will be lost unless you use the item now. If you just need to maintain your space, if you've already done a huge declutter, a purge of your entire space, but it's been a while. I had to do this recently because I broke my foot last summer and I was immobile for about two and a half months. So my house got a little bit, it piled up a little bit. So I had to go through kind of my entire space and do this. Don't forget about storage areas, your garage, your attic, your basement, wherever you tend to hold on to things that you're afraid you might miss one day that kind of represent who you wish you were. A lot of trash can accumulate in these areas too. So don't forget about them. And then don't forget on Sunday to give yourself a huge rest. You can hit this up once a month 
month. You can do it every single week until you feel like you've decluttered your space. But let me know what I should call this challenge. Um, I came up with it, I just haven't thought of a name for it, but it's something to do with weekly decluttering checklist. But I need it to be cuter than that and more catchy. Let me know what your ideas are in the comments below. Here is a playlist on the screen of more videos on how to live more clutter-free. I'll see you over there.